show, don't forget to download my app and follow me on Facebook and Twitter. All that stuff. Um, it seems every time something newsworthy happens these days, reporters always interview the craziest black person they can find. Y'all know what I'm talking about. First there was Antoine Dotson. So y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband because they're raping everybody out here. So embarrassing. He's setting his black race back. We've been watching that kind of stuff. Swing low. He's like 200 years out the window. Oh, and don't forget Charles Ramsey, the unlikely hero of the year. Really? I knew something was wrong when a little pretty white girl ran into a black man's arms. Something's wrong here. Oh, God. But here's the thing. Uh, I did some research. The funny black witness thing is not new. There have been crazy black witnesses at some of the most important moments throughout time. Take a look at this week's edition of Black Witness to History. <laughs> And now, Black Witness to History, November 22, 1963, Dallas, Texas. President John Fitzgerald Kennedy is struck down by an assassin's bullet. I see the whole thing. J.K. is just chilling, riding along with his Lincoln, waving it. Then boom! And I see the shooters, too. One was up in the book suppository. The other one was behind the grassy Beyonce nose. I tell you something. Ask not what your country can do for you. That's for better security. That's what I'm saying. Hey, you smell ribs? I smell pork ribs. You like ribs? Oh, Lord. If I could find me some ribs right now, some coleslaw with some soggy bread in the box with sauce all over that mother first guest is one of the most important figures in the music business, having co-founded the Def Jam label in his early 20s. He continues now as a music mobile entrepreneur and social activist. Please welcome Mr. Russell Simmons. <laughs> children, um, every morning I get to meditate with them and take them to school, uh -huh. and then I had to find additional information, uh, inspiration, uh -huh. come down the hill, and I'm now doing a lot of telling stories, movies, yeah. TV, internet, so I'm having a great time. I'm a new, new lease on life. You and I tweet to each other a lot, yeah. and um, you, I always see Breeze, uh, um, so I, I'm aware of what you're into. You do it with your kids, too? Every morning we meditate for 15 to 20 minutes. Um, stillness is the key, I mean, for everything. All creativity, all happiness, all everything comes from that. And I try to teach my children early. You know, they're 13 and 11 now, but they've been meditating for about three years. How did they respond initially to Daddy saying, let's meditate? Well, the mother's like, yo, you sit your ass. <laughs> like, the mother's very, she's a disciplinarian. Yeah, yeah. I, yes, I mean, she had a foot on my neck for 15 years. <laughs> and she's my best friend. And she's a great she... disciplinarian, absolutely. Yeah. And she's a great disciplinarian, and the kids are wonderful. She's done an amazing job. Uh, so you could be called a yoga enthusiast, right? Yeah, I guess so. I write books on this subject. I love, yeah. How did you start it all? I went because there were so many girls 20 years ago. <laughs> there was a, 20 years ago, there were no men doing yoga. Uh -huh. And I went, and after the first class, I was so inspired. I just a second of stillness, you know, and get to, and I was addicted from then yeah. on. So yeah, uh, it wasn't a lot of black men, but I, I went to one of your classes. Look, you know. Let's talk a little bit about ADD. Well, um, I have a oh my company, yeah, all yeah, that yeah. digital. <laughs> All that digital, it's a, it's a really fun experience. I came here to tell stories. So I saw a whole bunch of shows, HBO, and I'm making a bunch of movies. 
But in the core, there's lots of people who, young directors, writers, com comedians, even poets who need exposure and need to, you know, need vehicles for expression. And I can then fund and start producing immediately when I hear a good idea. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to ask nobody. I don't have to wait. I just go make it. And, I'm, and we've done so much in the last few weeks. It's unbelievable. And it's a fun experience, you know. It's a, it's a way of the future. Sometimes things that sound like a good idea don't turn out to be a good idea. Let's take oh, a so come right back with more Russell idea of my life. Uh, it was, I mean, it wasn't my idea. It was something I didn't produce it, write it, or, but I gave access to it, and I, and I, I let it play, and, and um, most people didn't see it, but complained about it, and, and uh, I didn't, let's explain what it was. There was this, all the there was this really, um, in really bad taste. I've done lots of comedy and lots of bad taste, lots of music and bad taste, lots of poetry that offended people, lots of music that people really felt you know hurt by but i always stood by it but this particular piece was something that when i understood how hurt people were i pulled it down immediately i've never pulled down a piece of content mm. it was this idea that this uh s slave took advantage of the slave master and blackmailed him and and it really struck a nerve in people and hurt their feelings so i pulled it down within a few hours of it going up and I try to move on. And I mean, like certain people, I mean, and of course everyone has a right to be as outraged as they want. Uh, they were outraged and they wouldn't let it go, I felt. And I felt that maybe it's something you won't, don't want to let go and, and that's okay. But I didn't get the calls from a lot of this. And then what it is, is it, well, I think I told you what it was, but I didn't get the, I, NAACP called me and I pulled it down. And they called me over Deaf Comedy Jam, mm -hmm. believe me. I and there was Deaf Poetry Jam, people were really upset. They were picketing and it was booed on national TV. That's a Tony and that's a and public enemy. They shot my office up. Mm -hmm. They had snipers and they told us if we didn't get rid of that racist band, they wouldn't, we wouldn't be on Columbia Records or any record company. So now flash forward, we got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We have a Tony Award and we have, you know, lots of experiences where, you know, we let artists speak freely. This time I didn't. It's the first time in 30 years I didn't elect to support the artists. So I pulled it down. And, you know, I, I, I didn't get any calls from any civil rights leaders or any people who, they just said, you know, we accept your apology because before they even knew about this, I had apologized. But a lot of these do-nothing Negroes, you know, they were very angry and kept talking. So it's been very tough for me. Yeah. Uh, they try to turn me into Paula Dean. <laughs> But, you know, I, I want to move past that, you know, I mean, okay. Old Deaf Digital is a fun place, a lot of expression. Since Martin and Jamie and Cedric and Chris Tucker, I mean, Chris and Steve Harvey and Bernie Mac, and I can go on and on, all those comedians happen, there's been no integration uh -huh. in Hollywood. And, the only, and if you think about J.B. Smoove, it's nice that he got a chance to be integrated, but there's a lot of black comedians waiting for that spot. I feel like my job in Hollywood is to give these young voices a way to cross over and be part of the mainstream because they haven't done it. And every time you go to Hollywood to sell a movie, they say, is Kevin Hart available? So well, Kevin Hart is a Def Comedy Gem guy as well, but he stood on the backs of every comedian as the greatest stand-up. And so finally he got the opportunities that lots of these guys deserve. So I feel I'm here to really, to do that. It's one of the things, I, I mean, I'm gonna do a Harry Tubman movie now. Mm -hmm. You know, when Viola Davis gave me this wonderful script. But I love Viola. And I'm gonna do, I'm going to tell a lot of stories. I'm going to have a lot of fun. I'm already having so much fun. I'm reading all these great writers and working with all these talented people. So it's it's a really good run right now. I'm excited about being here. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm glad we can move on from this point. Uh, I think you're a huge man to say I'm sorry and to pull it and admit you were wrong. Uh, I, I I admire you for that. Uh, you know, comedy is a lot of time about the most absurd thing you can think, right? What is the most 
outrageous thing and then you push a button, you know, and certainly deaf comedy has always been that way and we've made fun of our pain and we've made fun of a lot of things and it's always been something that, you know, has been edgy and lots of people have taken offense to a lot of stuff I've done, you know, I mean, lots of stuff I do every day and people take offense to but I, and I continue to do them. This particular thing, again, I, I'm really deeply sorry that I did it, it's, you know, I'm, I hope it goes, it's put behind me, it's a scar, you know, it's like, and I hope that, you know, I can heal all the wonderful things that you've done for music. One scar is a drop in a gigantic bucket, don't you worry about it. I've got some fun with you guys. Hey, I remember, I remember a time when, when they first gave me a show, I replaced Joan Rivers at Fox, and I didn't know what I was going to do with it because a lot of talent that I grew up watching wouldn't do my show. They would only do Mr. Carson's show. And I called you one day, and Mr. Rubin, Rick Rubin, had told you all the problem I was going through, and you introduced me to a man named James. He wasn't a man named, he was probably living with his grandmother. You brought <laughs> me LL Cool J, and it formed my show, the Arsenio Hall Show, and taught me, stop looking back, bro, there's a future and a forward you gotta go to. You helped me formulate who I am today by all the wonderful talent you brought me. I appreciate that. Well, um, yeah, yeah, I don't know if you know that. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm inspired to hear that. It makes me, you know, it makes me want to keep going. I appreciate that very much that you said that. I mean, you know, remember he kind of overwhelmed. Bad? Of course, I remember. Yeah, Beastie Boys and oh, Third Base. Oh, and it kept going. Right, it kept going. So you know, we we have a long history. I'm a big fan of yours. I mean, you while you say I inspired or helped you to move into your space, know that there was no vehicles of expression for us. That you made the generation happen. Let me say this though. Okay. The celeb celebrity is really good when you can use it to benefit others. And I have found it's a tremendous benefit. All the people that you mentioned and all the people you helped, all of them have done so much for our community. And the minute they got a shot, they used that celebrity to help many other people. And so thank you for that. You've been a big supporter of a lot of things. Some of it you don't even know. Well, uh, just, just very, very briefly before you leave, uh, you've got to comment on Big Sean, Kendrick Lamar, the entire controversy. i got to hear from you. It's like pro wrestling. You know what they do. I mean, it's like they got to do what they do. You know, it's like it's not violent. You know, it's just rap, you know, and it's good rap. You know, it's inspiring. You know, they, they do a thing like pro wrestlers or something. And, and I really, and I, I love all the new artists. I just, you, you know, don't love all of them. No, no, I mean, I mean, all the ones that's hot right now, I listen to them. And I mean, all deaf digital also became all deaf poetry. And all, but now it's all deaf music. And we start now, I'm back in the record, and I got sucked in. Because as I started the digital company, I realized there's no way to really explore all of what's deaf yes. without having music. So now I made a deal with Def Jam Records. And after a long time, I'm back in the music business. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm collaborating with a lot of these young cats, you know, and they got, you know, a lot of really inspiring, special, and, and different, you know, qualities that I never experienced. So I'm, I'm having a good time. Great. Um, yes, yes. Speaking of, uh, speaking of the young, the restless and the talented, we got a performance from Big Sean coming up. This is Russell Simmons. <laughs> Toyota Music Performance with Big Sean. Toyota, let's go places. Stacey Keebler is on the hunt to discover the next big thing on her series, Supermarket Superstar. Take a look at this clip. This is a crab pie. Let's take a taste. I'm a wrestler turn out <laughs> I'm very excited. Thank God you're from Maryland. Mm. Mm. This is good. I've had a lot of crab dishes in my life, and this is really good. Jam-packed with crab, though. There's no question about that. I don't want that, actually. <laughs> 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 I like that. Please welcome Stacey Kuhler. So I knew you long before.
before a lot of people realized who you were. Wow. Love wrestling. Uh, Went to see Bobo like... Brazil when I was five, take on Johnny Powers in Cleveland. <laughs> that was my thing. Um, but let's talk about your connection currently to sports. Uh, let's talk about fashion. Okay. You are coming up with jerseys for women? No, actually. Okay. I, I've always wanted to create, a, you know, a clothing line for avid female sports fans. Right. So I partnered up with Misha Mia, and we have a clothing line for the NFL and 160 universities, which in the next couple of years we will have 800 universities and everything for hockey, baseball, basketball, and everything. But it's, it's, you know, women who want to, there's two types of women when you go to a sporting event. Women that wear jerseys that are oversized or they try to buy the kids' size, whatever, and then you have the girls that want to look cute and sexy and have their team logo. So that's sort of what we're doing. It, would this be a good jersey for women to sleep in? Yes. Look sexy? Yes. Can you wear the jersey with pumps and no clothes it's on It's clothing. <laughs> Check that out. Check that out. Um, tell me about uh, the supermarket show. So the show is called Supermarket Superstar, and we're basically looking for the next Chef Boyardee or Bill Redenbacher. So people that have a recipe that they think should be on the supermarket shelves, you know, this is the show for them. We give yes. someone, someone wins a nationwide launch of their product on the you supermarket shelf. I, I tried to sell a show very similar to that, and they had just bought your show. Really? Yeah, I, I had this thing called uh, Corner Store Superstar. Oh, <laughs> and, and they, they didn't like mine because of yours. You know, like, like I had this product called Shingles. <laughs> it, and it, it's like, you know, the old broken potato chips, the little broken pieces. So you can eat these with a straw, <laughs> you know? Just kind of crumbs and stuff. We actually make it out of uh, instant mashed potatoes. And um, <laughs> you like butterfingers? Yeah. I got this thing called margarine fingers. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> these are. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> these will melt in your mouth <laughs> and your hands. You know? And they're a lot cheaper <laughs> than butterfingers. You know? We're trying, to, we're trying to work that out. Uh, I have a friend in Atlanta. Do you know rapper Ludacris? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We came up with Luda Loops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think they should have found the show. I love it. We did a great show. And, and the Luda Loops is cool because they come in different flavors. There's like a, a grape flavor, you know, grape drink. Very important, very important. <laughs> uh, there is a cognac flavor in it. And, uh, and, and, uh, one more. Oh, there's a chitlin flavor. <laughs> Luda Loop. And, and I love that, but because you sold yours, nobody cared about mine. Uh, tell me about Burning Man. I never heard about that till today. Wow. So basically, in the middle of a desert mm -hmm. where there's nothing going on, but during this week, th there's a festival. And it becomes the third largest city in Nevada, actually. And it's just, it's really amazing because there's no money, there's no phones. There's no, I know you have, you're already thinking. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I'm thinking strip clubs sound much better. <laughs> Man, no, but. it's just self-expression, creativity, there's art, there's music, there's, uh, basically there's anything you want there, and everyone, wait, 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 what does that mean? everything you want. So you smoke weed and... If you want to. Really? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's like Coachella. It is not like Coachella. Oh, okay. <laughs> Coachella is like preschool. Oh, oh, oh. It's just there's, there's art, it's a, it's a, it's different, it's not a music festival. Mm -hmm. What kind of music do you listen to? I'm just curious. I listen to a little bit of everything. Really? Yeah. So, you love country? You know, I listen to country. Yeah. You like hip-hop? I do. From Baltimore. Yes. Yes! <laughs> do you sing? Are you a musician at all? Any music I talent? I'm a better dancer than... Better dancer? Yeah. Yes. And with those legs, I would assume <laughs> that you do great things. <laughs> a long shot, but can you twerk? I have not, I have not tried twerking yet. I'm sure I can. If I yeah. try. You, you say, I, I'm sure I can. Have you ever twerked? I have not twerked yet. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to practice. Next time practice. I come back, I'll, I'll get a wrecking ball, and if you practice, <laughs> you're ready. <laughs> Big Sean coming up again. This is Stacey G. Luck.